Hi everyone and welcome to Triple M Adventures with Bill. This is the final episode of the Jumper T16 menu screens. We're going through the final windows of the model setup screens. So let's switch over to our Jumper T16. Right, let's carry on with the series two of the Jumper T16 menus. Um, the last video was about the model setup menu. So let's go into our model. So we've covered the model setup. Let's go on to the next one. Now that is flight modes. I've got a video of this. It will be in the, in the links below so that you can go and watch that video. But in this screen, we can set up flight modes, which will be displayed on your Jumper T16 screen. Very useful for making sure your quadcopter is not armed. You would, uh, for example, be able to show armed, disarmed, acro, angle, horizon and turtle mode. There are obviously lots of modes that could be put in there for gliders and quadcopters. Right, let's just have a look at the flight mode screen. So we can see the flight mode number and then in the second window, you can put a description of the flight mode and on the first flight mode, there is no available switch. That's the default flight mode. So in my case on this one, it's going to be armed. And then if we go down to F1, uh, flight mode one, you can see it's disabled and that's connected to my switch. And you can see whichever switch I activate, it will tell you on the screen which one is in what position. So if we go to... Okay, that's, let's go to turtle mode, turtle mode. Turtle mode. Turtle mode is off. Okay, right. The next screen we're going to come to, let's push our page button, is the inputs. This is where we can set up inputting rules for each stick. That would be our expos or our rates and the safe throttle. Here you'll see the basic four inputs you'll have on there when you first start up a new model is the throttle, aileron, elevator and rudder. And then you can see for this quadcopter I've got set up armed and then the modes and then the rates and then the RSSI set up. I again have a link in the description below if you want to have a more detailed look at what the input screen can do. Right, you can see here the settings that I've set up. As I say, there is a video for you to be able to look at where I'll go into this with more detail, but you can see you've got like the armed, the weight, the which switch, and then it tells you which switch is armed or not armed. You can see that it's disarmed and armed. Okay, dokey, right. Let's go on to mixes. Now I'll push the page button. Mixes, now in here, you can see all the first channels, which will be there by default. And then you can see all the channels that I've set up for the different operations of this quadcopter. So the mixes, this is where actions on your controls are mapped to the servos. For example, we could use this for Elevon or VTAL mixing. Some pilots uh, mix them down elevator and with flaps. You could set that up here. I do have a video in the uh, a video link in the description below to model setup and showing you how to set up elevons, which will help explain mixes. Okay, page again. Our next one we come up is outputs. Now, the outputs. This is the menu you would use to adjust mechanical variables in your model. The geometry of your control links may give you more up elevator than down, so you could make adjustments to correct this mechanical difference. This would be because of the angle of the push rods or, or whatever. I've, I've never actually done micro adjustments like this because I've normally trimmed the plane out, but this is where you could do that if the difference was quite obvious. Um, you may wish to set up your ailerons to have more up aileron on the dropping wing and less on the down uh, raising wing. This is known as aileron differential. I've made a video of this and I will leave it, the link in the description below. Um, the upward wing with less deflection up would cause less drag. This can help with adverse yaw. Okay, that's the outputs window explained. Right. Okay, let's push our page button. Now we're in curves. Now I've only used the curves to set up my safe throttle on my models. 
Curves can be used in either input formatting as the safe throttle setup or in mixes. So that's all I can really say about that. But if you go and look at my video on safe throttle, which I would leave a link in the description below, you'll see me using the curve, which might explain what they do. Okay, right. Next one page is global variables. Now I've just produced a video on this, so I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go and have a look at it and this will help you with this. Global variables are values that can be substituted to the usual number on every weight offset differential or expo setting. Their main use is to group the adjustment of several parameters that should have the same value. For example, in aileron differential on a glider with four surfaces responding to the aileron function. So you would set the differential up, the figures, and then you can select that GV1, GV2 um, in your mixes to be able to use the same figures on all the adjustments. So if you had four ailerons, they would all link to that GV1 number and that would allow the adjustment to be the same without having to set them up all individually. Okay, page button. We are moving on to logical switches. Now, logical switches are not real physical switches, but we can compare variables and combine various conditions to give programmed actions. For example, in my safe throttle setup, or being able to set up an amber sound warning when your LiPo and your battery is getting too low voltage. Great when you are not using your OSD and or not flying FPV. You will of course need a telemetry enabled receiver to do this. Again, there's a link to my safe throttle video which will help explain logical switches. Okay, special functions. This we use a lot, as you can see. I've got a lot of options here. Look at them all, tons of them. Okay. Special functions are used to set up your reset timer switch. You can also set up switch related sounds and also this is where we would set up our switch for our trainer function. I have a link in the description below to the custom sounds video which uh, shows you how to make custom sounds for your jumper T16. Okay, now we are going to move on to custom scripts. So we hit the page button and this is custom Lewis scripts. Now, the custom Lewis scripts allow you to change the behavior of your jumper T16 to add specialized features to your custom task. I have not used this function as of yet. I did search the internet to see if I could find an example to be able to put on my radio to show you, but I couldn't find any. Um, so, sorry I can't give too much of an explanation on this, but in, when I find its direct use, I will definitely then come back and cover this again. Okay, now we're going to move on to our final window, which is telemetry. In this screen, we can choose our source. Now, on my radio, I could only choose one source. Now, I'm not sure, but I think this may be when you have set up two receivers to have redundancy. And this is where you would pick which source, which receiver you would be using for your telemetry. The low alarm warning is quite obvious what that is. Uh, it's been set up for 45, which is standard, and then the critical alarm, which is 42. Disable telemetry alarms would be to disable them. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but maybe there is a reason, but I don't think I would, dis would disable them. Okay, and then you can see three sensors. In all, my receiver is sending back four sensor details. Discover new sensors is the option you use when you're setting up your receiver for the first time. This will allow the radio to find the sensors. Then we have delete all sensors. You may on occasion want to delete them all so that you can ask the re, uh, radio to rediscover the sensors. Ignore instances option. I'm going to give you a parrot fashion uh, answer to this because I've never used this, but my explanation I've got for this is Normally you will see a pop-up window showing all telemetry slots are full and you will not be able to close. Turn off the receiver, then close the pop-up window and enter the telemetry screen and delete the duplicated items. Then check this option to prevent this sensor from repeating the errors. 
So that's what um, that is used for. Now we go down to the virometer. Now this is where you would sort set up the source for your virometer um, telemetry. This is, for as I understand, this will allow you to show your artificial horizon on your jumper T16 screen. Now I'm not going to go into this in too much detail because I haven't actually set this up, but that's what you would do there. And these are the adjustments you make for that virometer. And that completes this final episode of the Jumper T16 model screens. Thanks for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you really enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel and please share this video with your friends. And if you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Happy flying. Stay safe. Bye for now. Bye.